Hey guys, welcome to the Sim Racing Panic. I'm William Marsh, and here is our review on the Oculus Rift CV1 virtual reality headset from a Sim Racer's perspective. This headset's been out for a little over a year now, so it's gotten quite established. Earlier last year, we saw the release of the Oculus Touch, and that combination was at a price tag of around $600. Now, this bundle is available for $399. So, with a $300 price cut, is it worth the value? Also, how does this perform for sim racing? Let's take a look. So, the Oculus Rift CV1 is the third Oculus Rift technically to be released. There were two developer kit versions, and those were slightly less performance-wise. It used a 1080p panel that was made by Samsung and essentially taken out of the Galaxy Note 3 smartphone. In this new display, it uses a split panel. Each panel uses a display of 1080 by 1200. That results in an effective resolution of 2160 by 1080. One other thing I wanted to talk about that isn't touched on enough is that this uses a dual display system. So it's one display per eye. And what that does is it does also give you a stereoscopic 3D effect. This allows you to have a greater depth perception than using a monitor. When you're using a monitor and even a triple screen setup, each display has a singular focal point. So imagine you don't have two eyes, but you have one eye right above your nose. That's essentially what you are seeing with a monitor. With the Oculus Rift, it does a better job simulating two eyes. So when you use the Oculus Rift, you'll notice things such as windshield wipers, cracks in a windshield in a rally title. Things like that are a little less distracting because you're able to simulate viewing around it. Imagine you hold your hand up in the middle of your face. Close one eye, you can't see past it. Open both eyes and you can technically see past because your brain is combining the two images and you can see around your hand. That is similar in concept to what the Oculus Rift is doing. And that's even before you factor in the head tracking. The way the head tracking works is you have this sensor. This sensor plugs in to your computer via USB 3. And it works similar in concept to how the Wii's tracking works. It uses infrared signal, and inside the Oculus Rift, underneath the head plate, there are all of these IR emitting lights. So it also works similar to another utility that's popular around sim racing called Track IR. So you have the sensor placed somewhere up, and then it tracks your head movement through the headset. And that actually works surprisingly well. You have to note that the headset has to be in the line of sight or else you might notice some abnormalities. There are also lights in the back of the headset as well. So that means you can also even look backwards, which you can see in some of my videos. It works well. I had to place it offset and it works well. However, it did sort of have some slight issues when I'm looking to the left. However, for this $399 bundle, you actually get a second sensor paired with it. And that is primarily used for the Oculus Touch sensors. But if you can't have the sensor dead ahead of you, you can also set it to your left and to your right. And you can set it that way to have a greater detection area with the sensors. And now to the big question. How does this headset work while you're driving? And I'll say it is promising, but there are definitely some early gripes with this being technically a first generation product. As mentioned before, this has an effective resolution of 2160 by 1200. That is technically what people would call a retina display. However, retina doesn't just take into effect pixels per inch. It also takes into effect viewing distance. So viewing distance also takes a great effect into if you can see pixels on a screen or not. At about 550 pixels per inch, you need to have a viewing distance of about 8 inches. 
However, in an Oculus Rift, you have a viewing distance of about two inches effectively. That means you are going to be seeing individual pixels and that might be upsetting for some. I did some calculations and essentially you're going to need an 8K resolution display before you can stop seeing individual pixels. And by my estimations, we aren't likely going to see Oculus Rift and HTC Vive adopt those panels until maybe the third generation. We're already seeing Samsung and other developers coming up with 4K resolution panels that are oriented towards virtual reality. Heck, Pimax, they're already advertising their upcoming 8K resolution virtual reality headset. However, to get it effectively working, we also have to wait for the hardware to catch up. Even with this lower resolution, another thing we need to take into effect is we need about 90 hertz. So we need about 90 frames per second to maintain a smooth display given into consideration our viewing distance and also the resolution. So with that, we need a fairly solid graphics card. I used the GTX 970 with this and found it to work all right, but there were some frame rate issues. I upgraded to a GTX 1080, which I'm going to be talking about in a future video, and I got significantly better performance and also less motion sickness. Also, another thing I wanted to mention is there is a new technology with the CV1. They call it Asynchronous Space Warp, or ASW for short. What it does is it will attempt to predict the next frame and then it will render that ahead of time. So it's predicting the next frame, rendering it. The issue with that is the prediction doesn't really work well with head tracking. And head tracking is essential in the sim racing environment. So that ASW ends up creating some weird artifacting while driving. And that could actually exasperate the motion sickness that you might encounter. Even though it is feeling smoother, getting that disorienting juddering and seeing things warping a bit is less than ideal. However, let's consider you do have a powerful enough PC, you have this set up, and you are driving in a racing simulator. How does this work? And I'll say pretty darn well. Once you get past that lower resolution display on the Rift, you get some solid immersion. This is one of the most immersive experiences I've had. And it's not just the head tracking. It's also the fact that you are immersed into three dimensions. You're not just rotating. You're also moving your head on the X, Y, and Z axis. And that is incredibly immersive. Also add in the two displays as mentioned before. They're simulating your eyes. So you get incredible depth of field. And that is great for looking ahead. Being able to have that immersion, having that ability to see forward and have that perception of depth really works great in the favor of the sim racer. Another thing I want to talk about is the headphones. I actually took them off the headset, which is a cool touch as well, but they work pretty darn well. It is worth noting that they are open backed headphones, so you might get some external noise in, which could be good or bad depending on who you are. You might want to keep yourself from having friends sneak up on you and try to scare you, but you are going to have some noise leak. You are going to have some noise coming in. I removed them because I like using my Sennheiser HD 598Cs with this headset, which are closed back headphones, so you get that isolation. I have also tested this headset with the Audio-Technica M40Xs. They sort of cramped on my head a bit because you are wearing a headset. So if you're wearing on-ear or over-the-ear headphones, take that into consideration. This is going to require a slightly wider headphone. So with all of this being said, let's get on to my pros and cons. My first pro is the two displays. That double display, one for each eye, really does wonders for being able to see depth perception. It does that good job of immersing you into that 3D world. My second pro is the head tracking. The head tracking is very well done. It really does pick up, and Oculus did a great job implementing all these different 
IR LEDs to be able to see what you are doing. My next pro is the headphones work pretty well. They give you a decent sound stage. They are open back as mentioned before, so your tastes may vary, but even if you don't like them, you can easily remove them. My next pro is this is pretty lightweight. Once you put it on your head, you don't really feel it too much. Your head easily grows accustomed to it and you don't give much thought about it. My next pro is the value. This as is right now is $399 for the headset, sensor, the Oculus touch controllers, a second sensor, Xbox One wireless controller, and an adapter. That is a great deal and it really undercuts the competitor, the HTC Vive, and also the Pimax offering, the Pimax 4K headset, which renders at 60 hertz, which could encourage more motion sickness. That is for roughly the same price as this. So for the Oculus Rift, even though it's lower resolution than the Pimax, having that extra 30 hertz helps a lot. And now let's get onto some of the cons. And the first con, as mentioned before, this has a lower resolution panel. While it is higher than 1080, having it so close to your face really does exasperate the issue of seeing individual pixels. And that is somewhat irritating when a lot of the mindset for racing is seeing far ahead. And with a lower resolution panel, you aren't able to see as far ahead. My next con is you're going to need a powerful PC to power this. For intensive titles, you're likely going to need to jump up to a 1070 or a 1080 to really be able to power this. And that can add up pretty quickly. If you need a computer, you're going to need to spend quite a bit on one that can power virtual reality. My next con is title support is dependent on the developer. Most sim racing titles will have some sort of support for the Oculus Rift. R Factor 2 recently implemented support. Assetto Corsa, Project Cars, the upcoming Project Cars 2, iRacing, they all support the Oculus Rift. However, older titles, ones that are based on older architecture, such as the original R Factor, GTR 2, Automobilista, they do not support the Oculus Rift. And that is disappointing. There is a third party utility that I've heard that might be able to help called Vorpex. That is about $40. And I think that can help get some sort of Oculus Rift virtual reality support for titles, but I have not tested that out myself as of right now. The next con I have is this can actually get kind of sweaty. There is a foam band that actually protects your face and this can be a sweat magnet. Also, you're moving your head around a lot and you can quickly work up a sweat around your brow and that'll get into the headset and it can get a little uncomfortable with that. This is lightweight though, but that sweat can make things a little uncomfortable. My next con is related to the viewing of this headset. There is what they call a sweet spot for viewing on the headset. You really need to get it on just right or else you're going to get a blurry image. Also worth mentioning that that can also be affected by people who need to wear prescription lenses. There are third-party prescription lenses that are available for the Oculus Rift, or you could theoretically fit a pair of glasses in and then put it on. However, it really depends on your glasses and also depends on your vision. Some people who have prescription lenses can wear this just fine. Some people are really affected. Some glasses fit, some glasses don't. Your mileage may vary, but that is something worth mentioning. One last con I wanted to mention is the motion sickness. I didn't really experience this myself unless I was running at a lower frame rate because my system was not set up properly. When this is running at 90 frames per second, I didn't feel the motion sickness. I have heard stories of people who are getting motion sickness either because their lenses aren't calibrated properly, they might have more vision requirements in terms of glasses or contacts, but the bottom line is motion sickness with virtual reality is not a system that can really be quantifiable and a one size fits all. It ultimately is going to come down to if you are motion sickness inclined or if you are not. 
However, for myself and my testing, I didn't have the issue. My roommate, he had some issues and some other friends had some minor issues. But also I encourage if you are feeling a little motion sick, maybe take a little time off, maybe ease yourself into it. Because some people have said, if you ease yourself into it, you can wean yourself off that disorientation. However, your mileage may vary. And if you are feeling extremely queasy, then I might not recommend this. So let's get to the million dollar, actually, let's get down to the $399 question. Do I recommend the Oculus Rift? While it is an early technology, I think it's something you should at least try once. And if you like it, you can really immerse yourself in. I would recommend it for people who are able to use it. Some people aren't really going to be suited for this. Either the lower resolution or the frame rate might lead them to getting motion sick. I've heard both stories. So ultimately it's gonna come down to if you can hold on to your lunch while using the Oculus Rift. I enjoy it. I find myself not getting motion sick unless there are major frame rate hiccups, which have happened at times while streaming. But ultimately when this is working right, I really enjoy it. I really love the immersion factor and that really works well for me. Will it work well for you? I can't really speak for everyone. You can try it. If it doesn't work for you, you can always use a return policy at a store. But I encourage anybody in sim racing to at least try this once. This is definitely a first generation product. Will it improve? I see that path going into future. So I think either get in on it now or wait. But virtual reality is here to stay and I'm enjoying it so far. So I'd like to hear your thoughts. Have you tested out the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive or maybe even another headset? Let us know in comments. Let us know your thoughts. Also, if you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button down below and help keep us on track. For the Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Mars and you have a great rest of your day.